Hey, what's going on guys? Chris Chavez here with Fandroid.com. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at an application that's not quite in the Google Play Store just yet, but it will be soon in the future. It's called Minimum Keyboard, and uh, this actually started out as an Indiegogo project uh, back in April and was uh, successfully funded. I, I guess the people saw so much promise in this keyboard that uh, they actually raised above their $10,000 goal. They actually raised $87,000. Uh, that's kind of the hype that was going on with this keyboard. So uh, it's actually going into, I guess you could call it a beta for the Indiegogo backers. And after that, you know, it'll go into some kind of open beta where you can test it out and uh, download it from the Google Play Store. So uh, I've actually got my hands on a copy here. So this is still kind of early, but it's uh, functional. So the way this works is it tries to address the problem of just QWERTY keyboards using up too much screen real estate. Normally when you have a QWERTY keyboard, it goes bonk. And then you have a very small area to type in. Uh, with this one, it's actually cool because, you know, it's just a single line. So they try to fix the whole QWERTY keyboard taking up too much screen real estate. And it actually, it, it's actually beneficial for maybe devices with smaller screens, uh, like a smartwatch or maybe even Google Glass and stuff. The guys actually got some pretty cool little uh, algorithms and stuff that figure out stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how it works. Basically, it's laid out in a single line, but it's still, you can see the letters are kind of there as they would be on a typical QWERTY. So, uh, let's give this a shot. A wit, a suit, uh, and then you have your predictions up there along the top. Uh, I might have typed that out wrong. A shot. There we go. And then you uh, actually use swipes to go forward or actually add a space. And then you can uh, swipe again to add a dot. So not too much unlike, there was actually a keyboard called Flexi that I was testing out and I absolutely hated it, but uh, really good with the whole prediction stuff. But you had a swipe in between words, which just seemed, I wouldn't say counterintuitive, but it just kind of slowed me down. I kind of need a space bar to type. And on this one, I'm doing okay without a space bar, but uh, there are some features where uh, lots of settings and stuff so I'm gonna I'll go into those in a second uh, but there are gestures so you can go swipe up to go uh, make a space and add periods uh, go back and delete a word if you need to and uh, you can actually add a re like a I guess the return button by swiping to the corner uh, swiping to oh this side will get you into your settings which we'll go to in a second uh, then you have your space, I mean your, uh, what do you call that? Your shift to add a caps. And uh, what else do we got? Oh, and when you sh swipe down, you go into your number rows there. So you can quickly type out some numbers or a phone number or whatever you need to. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Long pressing, it's actually not really a long press. That's what actually I like about it. Is when you try to get to the numbers or even punctuation, uh, normally you have to wait for that delayed long press. But this one pretty much just pops up right away. And then you can, whoa buddy. Uh, just swipe up there and then choose whichever one you like. So uh, this is actually not too bad if you don't really care too much about like I would say like punctuation or if you use too many slang words or weird stuff. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but like with teenage girls and stuff, if uh, or if a chick ever sends you a hey, uh, it means she wants the D, and if it's almost impossible to to even type that out on this. So you know what, the girls are just gonna have to tell you outright I guess. <laughs> oh, let's go into the settings and then we can uh, explore some of those here. I'm actually going to add the spacebar. It's one of the first options here at the top. Uh, and then when you add, uh, you can actually disable gestures, so the swipings and backwards and all that stuff if you'd like. But you have to have space enabled because otherwise how would you type a space? Uh, this will learn as you type, vibrate on touch, double space for a period, so swipe twice or just click the space bar twice now. And there's a lot of cool options. Well, I like this part where you can actually customize the height and stuff. So you can make it a lot bigger to type on and then it gives you a little area to test on. So you can see here, my space bar is kind of big and honking because I just ah, go crazy on the space bar sometimes. And usually I miss it, but you can see here you can make, this is just the word suggestions. I'm gonna make those kind of small. We don't need those too big. And then uh, main keyboard height, again, you can do the same thing and adjust the keyboard height there as well. But I mean, I guess the point is to save screen real estate. So you wanna kind of try to at least keep it as small as possible. So I kept it kind of small there. And then of course you can uh, import your dictionary from your stock keyboard app that you have or your contacts as well, reset preferences, and that's about it. So 
This is minimum 1.0. Let's go ahead and try it now with the space bar. Um, trying <clears throat> out the new, uh, let's go back, new min, how do you spell that? You, um, keyboard application. Ah! <laughs> I think I typed in too many. Yeah, it, it's, there's a learning curve for sure. So, there we go. Application and then space for a thing. Uh, so there's a pretty big learning curve. Uh, I feel like on a smartphone, uh, yes, you, you save screen real estate, but really, if you have the screen real estate there, why not use it? <laughs> you know, uh, a big keyboard is actually really easy to use. So I feel like this might be better for something with a very tiny screen, maybe like a 3.5 inch device, one of those old school Androids like on your G1. But uh, for like the big phones right now, I feel like it's just kind of, uh, it's trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, most people try to do this with these crazy like eight pen keyboard and people force themselves to use it and learn it. But really, why have to force yourself to learn something when the traditional QWERTY works just as fine? So, I mean, if Minimum just had, you know, a regular, with the little buttons, like a regular QWERTY keyboard, I think I actually might like it because the prediction seems pretty spot on and you can just kind of blind type and go nuts. Uh, the same goes with Flexi. It's just like, why try to change things so drastically to the point of where uh, it's just unnatural and it's so such a steep learning curve and really tough to use. So, I'm uh, definitely going to keep an eye out on this. This is Minimum keyboard. Soon, uh, coming soon to the Google Play Store, but for now it's just in a beta, so uh, if anything big changes, I mean, we might release an updated video later, but for now, I'm ChrisChildsFanjo.com, thank you guys for watching this video, we'll see you next time.